Hi all. So in today's class, we will study about compensators. So last class we have studied about controllers. So controllers and compensators that are actually used to obtain the desired output in case the transfer function is not or the open loop transfer function is not able to give us the desired output. So last class we studied about the uh, different types of controllers that is P, P, I, D, P, D, then P integral. So combination, everything you have seen. So and now we are going to study about compensators. So the purpose is same. And in why we need a, com a compensator. And then we study about lead compensator in detail. So you'll see. A compensator is a component in the control system and it is used to regulate another system. So basically, you know, we have the figure here, like there will be an input will be there and this will be there. And you have G of S and then we have the output and then H of S will be there. So H of S here, H of S is equal to one. So this will be the compensator, just like the controller, this will be the compensator. So if G of S is not able to regulate the output, then we, we go for another compensating element. So in most of the time, it is done by conditioning the input or the output to the system. So this is the system. So here we are conditioning the input to the system. So there are three types of compensators, lag lead and lag lead compensators. So I think you got what is the basic idea of co compensator. That is, if the performance of a system is not up to the expectation as per desired specification, then some changes in the systems are required to obtain the desired performance. So if the system, so the system mentioned here, if it is not able to give a desired output, then we make some changes in the system. So the changes can be in the form of adjustment in the forward path gain. So before change, the forward path gain was G of S. So after the adjustment, it will be the compensator multiplied with G of S. So we insert the compensating device in the control system and we call it the compensator. So the compensating device is in, introduced in the, so this is the compensating device. So this is compensator. So now you might be having, what is the difference between compensator and controller? So once we study controllers and compensators, then I will tell you the uh, small differences. Okay. So before going in detail about the different types of compensators, that is lag lead and lag lead compensators, I will just show you a practical example, which helps you understand the concept of compensators. So this is an example. So we have a transfer function or the system function G of S is equal to K by S square into S plus two into S plus three. And H of S is equal to one here because unity feedback. Okay, so last but one class before you have studied. So how we will you write the characteristic equation? One plus G of S into H of S. What is it? Numerator of the transformer, uh, sorry, transfer function. The numerator equal to zero. That is one plus G of S into H of S is equal to zero. So from that we can write the characteristic equation. That is one plus K by S square into S plus two into S plus three. You will be more familiar with these things when we do the problem. So once I finish the theory session, I will go to problems so that it will be a single video and you can revise it whenever you want. So plus K equal to zero. So this is the characteristic equation and final form after multiplication, we can write S raised to four plus five S cube plus six X squared plus K equal to zero. So my question is, is this a stable system or unstable system? So how will you say, don't tell me that you will do Ruth Hurwitz criteria and solve it. I know you have studied Ruth Hurwitz criteria in uh, signals and system. So you can use RH criteria, but your concept should be okay here because you might have studied 
if any power of s is missing so 4 is there 3 is there 2 is there but s raised to 1 is not there that means this is an unstable system so even if you do by rs criteria you will understand that this is unstable so the g of s in this particular question is unstable so we need to make it stable so what we are going to do let's see so we need to make it stable so so i told you like both compensators and controllers they are used for increasing the stability so here we are using a introduce a pd controller introduce a pd controller so pd controller you know the transfer function what is the equation of the transfer function for a pd controller so transfer function is equal to proportionality plus derivative so it will be s into kd so the new transfer function will be so g of s gets updated to g of s is equal to kp plus s into kd into the previous g of s what it is into k by s square into s plus 2 into s plus 3 so it is into k by s square into s plus 2 into s plus 3 so you can take k equal to 1 then let k is equal to 1 then what will be the new characteristic equation the new characteristic equation is equal to 1 plus g of s into h of s is equal to 0 so h of s was unity feedback then s square into s plus 2 into s plus 3 plus s into kd plus kp so solving it multiplying we get s raised to 4 plus 5 s cube plus 6 x square plus kd into s plus kp equal to 0 so you can see that the missing power s raised to 1 is here so this has become a stable system so even if you use rho service we get so this has become a stable so you can say stability stability here depends upon stability depends upon the controllers kp and kd right so if kd equal to 0 again if this is unstable so if kd has some value means this is stable only s is to 1 and kp also have some value because kp into s is to 0 so all powers are there then only it become stable so i think this this is the basic idea behind controllers how they are making unstable system stable now we will see the case of compensators so already i told you there are different types of compensators lag lead and lag lead before that so university exam this will be a very good question for you why we need a compensator so one small idea i give you compensate unstable system to make it stable in order to obtain the desired performance of the system we use compensating networks compensating networks are applied to the system in the form of feed forward path gain just like we go for controller we multiply it along with the forward path gain so it minimizes the overshoot so overshoot you will study in detail in the next module these compensating networks increase the steady state accuracy that increase in steady state accuracy brings instability to the system so you, you will understand it in the next module compensating networks also introduces poles and zeros very important in the system thereby causes changes in the transfer function so you know we are multiplying it with the g of s and definitely there will be a change in the transfer function there will be poles and zeros being added due to this the specification of the system also change okay necessary necessity of compensation then methods of compensation so this compensating device can be given added in series with the forward loop path as well as it can be 
given parallel. So connecting compensating circuit between error detector and the fans is known as series compensation. So error detector between compensator is here. So this is series. Now the next one is feedback compensator. When compensator is used in feedback manner, so you can see here this is compensator is used as a feedback manner. It's called feedback compensator. A compensating network is one which makes some adjustment in order to make up for the deficiencies in the system already explained. Compensating devices are, or maybe in the form of electrical, mechanical, or hydraulic system. So electrical compensators are RC filters. So most of the electrical compensators are RC filters, uh, lead, lag, or lag lead. So depending upon the position. So this can be considered as a high pass filter and also as a low pass filter. This compensator circuit is same as that of a high pass filter or low pass filter. I, I will show you. So before going into each compensator in detail, I will make you understand some basic concepts. So already you know, compensator is an electric network used to modify the transient and steady state performance. So if you consider a transfer function, transfer function means here you will have an input and here you will have an output. So consider a sinusoidal input. So we consider a sinusoidal input. So that is sine omega t and it passes to the transfer function. We get an output, right? Transfer function including the compensator. So you get an output. So that output will be, so there can be a, some change in the magnitude A into sine omega t plus or minus phi. So that angle can also change. A is the magnitude. It can also change. And there will be a phase difference. Phase will also change. So the basic idea is if the output is if the output is A sine omega t plus phi then we can say the output is leading. So we have added a lead compensator. Then if it is A sine omega t minus phi, then it is a lag compensator. Okay, take one example. The transfer function is given us 1 by s plus 3, that is our g of s. So, s is equal to minus 3 is a pole, right? So, an angle will be, how will we, how will we consider like an angle? Angle will be tan inverse minus, because, okay, I will write in detail because you haven't studied it before, right? So you know that S is equal to J into omega. So angle will be, so angle of a constant is zero. So zero minus tan inverse Y by X. So tan inverse three by omega by three. So because this is Y, this is the constant X plus j omega, sigma plus j omega actually it should be. So this is the real part, this is the imaginary part. That should be, so angle is negative. So negative angle you are getting. So you can conclude like this. Adding poles give negative angle. That is Negative angle means lag, lag compensator, lag compensation. So in the second case, if G of S is equal to S plus three, so S is equal to minus three is a zero. 
so you can now you might have understood since s is equal to minus 3 is a zero angle will be tan inverse omega by 3 angle will be tan inverse omega by 3 which is positive and we have a lead compensation so this is the basic idea of compensation adding of zero and four so if you are adding a zero then it will be lead compensation and if you are adding a pole then it will be lag compensation so according so the circuit should be in such a way that we are able to add so if you want a lead compensator then the circuit should be in such a way that a zero is getting added so now let's see uh, the lead compensator in detail so a lead compensator means a system which has one pole and one dominating zero so what do you mean by a dominating zero the zero which is closer to the origin than all other zeros is called a dominating zero so i will show you the plot also so if you have sigma and j omega here the zero should lie more closer and the pole should try after that so more close to the origin means zero should be dominant so zero lead compensation means it should have a dominant zero if you want to add as dominating zero for compensation control system then we have to go for the lead compensation network okay so this is the basic diagram of a lead compensator so we can write so if vi is the input then output will be vi of s and output in input will be vi of s output will be vi out of vi out or out of s and then uh, in capacitance in laplace form will be 1 by sc and r1 and r2 will have uh, laplace will be the same only so the transfer function will be v output of s by v input of s understood okay so the basic requirement of the phase lead network is that all poles and zeros of the transfer function of the negative must lie on the negative real axis and zero located nearer to the origin that is should be a dominant zero okay so before going to the derivation let me tell you a lead compensator will be a high pass filter a lead compensator will be a high pass filter okay so you can write from here v output by voltage division rule v output is equal to v input into same branch resistance r2 divided by other branch resistance so r1 plus r2 or you can write uh, this together will be r equivalent so you can write r equivalent plus r2 okay so how it becomes a high pass filter so if you are considering uh, just for your knowledge only i am saying so if you are considering figure here so low at low frequency that is omega equal to 0 that means s is equal to 0 so omega equal to 0 and s is equal to 0 means by voltage division rule s is equal to 0 so 1 by 0 infinity infinity means capacitor is open right capacitor is open so then there is no need of equivalence so v output will be so uh, what capacitor open so, so then it will be a very low value so if you are considering input as 10 and resistance input as 3 volt and the values are 10 and 5 here then it will be so if this is 10 and this equivalent is equal to 5 then you can write v output will be equal to 10 by 10 plus 5 into 3 that is equal to 2 volt okay so input into the resistance into resistance so 3 volt so you can understand that there is only a small voltage is there 2 voltage only is coming 
it should be omega and this is the output so only we are getting a 2 volt so in the next case if omega is equal to infinity that is s is equal to infinity that means 1 by infinity is 0 so this will be a short circuit so this will be a short circuit then the voltage the entire 3 volt will directly come here so that means you can draw it like at low frequency the voltage is very less and high frequency we are getting the complete voltage so that's why we say it is a high pass filter so i think you understood briefly low pass filter means low pass filter means the frequency is less so when we write uh, this much value we are getting then high pass so because this is open so there is no need of considering that so it will be this is 10 only so 10 10 yeah, this is 5 actually. So, 10 by 10 plus 5 into 3. Simple. 2 volt, you are getting. So, that is how it is becoming high pass filter. Just remember, lead compensator is a high pass filter. Okay. Now, let us go to the derivation. So, we know transfer function is equal to V output of S by V input of S implies V output of S is equal to R2 into V input of S divided by R2 plus R equivalent. So, this much, this together is R equivalent, R equivalent. So, transfer function is equal to V output of S by V input of S is equal to so r equivalent is r1 parallel to 1 by sc so it will be r2 divided by r2 plus r1 by sc1 r1 that is equal to r2 into 1 plus r1 c1 s divided by R2 into 1 plus R1 C1S plus R1 and then rearranging it we will get transfer function is equal to R2 into 1 plus R1 C1S divided by R1 plus R2, you multiply it, then you will get R1 plus R2 into 1 plus R1 R2 by R1 plus R2 into C1 of S. And you can write alpha is equal to R2 by R1 plus R2, which is the attenuation factor. And the alpha should be always less than 1. Why? Because R2 by R2 is already 1. So, R2 by R1 plus R2. Something plus R2 will be less than 1. Understood. And now, we can write transfer function is equal to alpha into 1 plus R1 C1 S divided by 1 plus alpha R1 C1 S. And T, the time constant is equal to R1 C1, that is equal to RC. Now you can say RC itself. In place, transfer function will be equal to alpha into 1 plus ST divided by 1 plus alpha ST. So from here you can write the 0 will be minus 1 by t and whole is equal to minus 1 by alpha t. So, if you plot it sigma j omega then 0 will be minus 1 by t and alpha is always less than 1. So, if alpha is equal to 0.5 then pole will be minus 2 by alpha t right. So, it will be somewhere 2 by t. This will be somewhere here only. So, my 
2 by t. So you have a dominant pole. So this is a lead compensator. Very simple. The same thing I have plotted here. Minus 1 by t and minus 1 by alpha t. So the above network can be visualized as an amplifier with a gain of 1 by alpha. So clearly we have minus 1 by t, which is a zero of the transfer function and it is closer to the origin than minus 1 by alpha t, which is the pole of the transfer function. So lead compensator, zero is more dominating than pole. And because of this lead network introduces positive phase angle, already I told you, when connected in series. So I hope you understood. This is very clear for you. OK, so here we have already studied so different types of compensators, what is application of controllers, then why we need the compensator, then what do you mean by a lead compensator? Then what do you mean by uh, it when we uh, add a zero or when we add a pole and all these things and also high pass filter, how a lead compensator is becoming a high pass filter also, I think it's clear for you. Before winding up this uh, topic, so one more, uh, like, uh, let me conclude about the phase angle also. So you can write uh, here, the, the angle phi is equal to for a lead compensator, it will be tan inverse omega t minus tan inverse alpha omega t. So transfer function, you know, right? Transfer function is equal to 1 plus st by 1 plus alpha st, right? So phi is equal to tan inverse omega t minus tan inverse alpha omega t. And then the zero is at c is 1 by t and pole pc is 1 by alpha t. And then from here you can write t equal to 1 by z c and alpha is equal to z c by pc. So, so this is, we are talking about the frequency, right? So maximum frequency omega m is given by 1 by t into root alpha. Actually, this is based on corner frequency in body plot. So that you will study later, don't worry. So, but just understand that maximum angle omega is 1 by t root alpha. Then phi max is equal to tan inverse 1 by t into root alpha into t minus tan inverse 1 by t into root alpha into alpha t. So that is equal to tan inverse 1 by root alpha minus tan inverse root alpha that is equal to tan inverse 1 by root alpha minus root alpha divided by 1 plus 1. That is the mathematical formula. So that is equal to phi max is equal to tan inverse 1 minus alpha by 2 root alpha. So the same equation can be written in terms of sine also. So here you have tan inverse is opposite side by adjacent side. So if this distance is d, then adjacent side you have 2 root alpha, angle is phi max and opposite side will be 1 minus alpha. So sine phi max is equal to p by d, so you call this P, it will be opposite side by hypotenuse P by D, which is equal to 1 minus alpha by 1 plus alpha because D is equal to root of 2 root alpha square plus 1 minus alpha the whole square, which is equal to 1 plus alpha. So this value is equal to 1 plus alpha the whole square. So this way also again. So sine r phi max is 1 minus alpha by 1 plus alpha. So these two equations are very important when we talk about a lead compensator.
So going ahead, if you have any doubt in this area, you will understand when we finish the complete coursework. So don't worry. So I hope everything is clear for you. So if you have any doubts, you can put the comments, then I will clear it for you. Thank you.